Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for having me. Uh, we uh, actually, I'm quite in, uh, excited that more and more people are getting interested in e-mobility. E we believe it's about time that we educate the people on what our near future would be because we are seeing in 10 years, internal combustion engine or ice would be a thing of the past. I'm quite happy as well because the topic assigned to me is ensuring safe charging experience from the Philippines. We have been in the business for quite some time now, managing fleets of fully electric vehicles. So I think I can relate to this matter. So with that, let me start my presentation with this quote from Karen Salmason. What if I told you that 10 years from now, your life would be exactly the same? I doubt that you would be happy. So why are you so afraid of change? I think, uh, well, this is based on our experience, my experience personally, uh, different, uh, I think the only reason that people are a bit scared of change is because they don't know what's out there. And sometimes other people tend to make it hard for common people well, like me to understand the situation. So I'd like to simplify this by me asking questions to the audience. What if I tell you that a few kilometers away from Pasig City Hall, there's a gasoline station? Will you be afraid of it? I don't think so. On the other hand, especially for drivers like me, you will be assured knowing that if your gas is low, you just need to fuel it up and you will reach your destination without worrying, worrying that your vehicle will stall along the way. And so what if I tell you that the charging station that we are discussing now will simply replace the existing gasoline stations that we have? Should it cause for an alarm? I think it shouldn't. But rather, it should make you feel relieved. All we are saying is, if we are deplo deploying electric vehicles, it is imperative that we also set up charging stations. This is what happened from before when we started introducing internal combustion engine. We also set up gasoline stations for this. And I'm pretty sure that back then, they encountered the same issue we are facing now. But of course, again, the question I, I saw in the in the survey, Alvin, it, one of the concerns is safety and yes, other sir. infrastructure, mm -hmm. most com compatibility. I, I agree with you. So I, I want to shed some lights on some matters. You might not, I might not be able to answer all. Uh, let me just show you this slide. This is a seven kilowatt charger that we are currently using in our operations in Davao. It's a slow charger. So you're, you'll, you'll be seeing there, there's two ports wherein you can plug. The first one is for the seven kilowatt charger or the slow charger as we call it. Okay, this is being used while we are not using the vehicles or mostly at night. So while they are being parked, we are also charging the vehicles. We are doing this because we need to be sure that all the cells inside the battery are balanced. And since it's just 7 kilowatt, charging hours is long, longer compared to the other chargers. That's why it's advisable to use it while you're not using the vehicle or it's being parked at night. Now this next slide. That one is the 50 kilowatt fast charger. The fast charger is being used while we're doing operations because we need to we need to be sure that there's a little delay in the operation as much as possible. Okay.
let me just go back to this one. I guess uh, for most, uh, the question also is, what if we overcharge? Especially if we're doing a overnight charging, there's a possibility that your personnel might fall asleep and then left the charger plug and you, worry, and you might worry, what if something goes wrong? But we actually uh, have this in mind before we start operations. And so we make sure the technology that we're using is safe enough. This low charger actually, uh, once it reach 100% capacity of the battery, it will, and then you forget to unplug it, it will slowly drop its state of charge. So meaning if it reach 100% and the plug is still there, it's still on, slowly it will go from 100 down to 99, 98, so on and so forth. So uh, overcharging is not possible. And somehow it's the same with the fast charger. But this one, if you see here, let me just say it. So once you plug it there, this charger should be able to communicate with the vehicle. You're seeing it there. Setting up communication with the car. There. So you see there, sorry, that the, the, the charger now knows that the vehicle state of charge is up to 58% only. And so it will charge the vehicle. Then when it reached 100%, it will automatically stop. The charger would now know that it, it's already 100%. So he has to stop charging. And this is, again, I, we're using this for our uh, day operations, and we're just using this for opportunity charging. Uh, some of you might uh, ask, why are we saying opportunity? Because basically, we're just taking advantage of the opportunity that the vehicles are in the terminal waiting for passengers. And sometimes it, it would just take you five, 10 minutes, maybe sometimes longer, depending on the hour. And that is good enough for us so that we can bring back what was used in the trip. So what is happening is, let's say I, let's use uh, my uh, Valenzuela, I'm sorry, uh, Manila to SM North route. What happened is if you leave, um, Manila, and then you go to SM North where we have fast charger, you just need to, you, you, you'll, you are there for like five, 10 minutes and while waiting, you're charging and then you make another trip again and then the same process. When you uh, go back to SM North, you will do the same. Now, what are the factors we considered in setting up charging stations? Uh, there are key points that we have to consider in planning for charging station. And one of, the, one of those is the source of power or electricity. This will not only bring down cost of infrastructure when we set up chargers, but this will also speed up the process because if there's no available power that is needed for the, like this one, this one is a, 60 kilowatt charger, the one that you're seeing in the picture, and it, it requires 400 volt. So if you don't have that power in that location, you need to set up transformer, and then you have to do infrastructure pa. It would take time, of course, not to mention the permitting and all. And then you also have to consider strategic location. Again, I go back to my analogy of gasoline stations just like how they are setting up or, or how they set up their gasoline stations. We also want that our uh, charging station is accessible to the users and located where more people can use it. 
But then again, I saw nga, uh, earlier uh, the space they're asking there, there's no available space. I, I, I think I would agree on that also. And then also you have to consider your clients, your cost or your customers, because if you set up charging stations, you have to make sure it's somewhere, somehow nearby your clients. Everybody making sure that if you need to charge up, it's just around the corner. And of course, the size of the vehicles or the size of battery, because battery uh, varies depending on who's producing it and what's being produced. And there are also different uh, chargers. There's what, like what I've shown you already, we have seven, 50, 60, there's also 20, 30. So depending on the size of the battery, you have to consider which of those you want to set up or to use. And then of course the number of vehicles because uh, you have to know how many potential vehicles will be using that station because you have we also need to consider the size of the area. The next question is, what are the relevant policy and technical considerations? The relevant po policy, I think uh, most of you are aware, or if not, there is a Senate bill. Uh, it's Senate Bill 1382. It's an act providing the national energy policy and regulatory framework for the use of electric vehicles and the establishment of electric charging stations. Uh, we are hoping uh, this one will be passed soon because it's about time that we have this policy in place, especially now that we're gearing into this uh, e-mobility. Okay, and then I, I saw then also one of the issue raised is compatibility. I, 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 I agree with that. There has to be a charging standard. Uh, just Charging standard, there is a lack of consistent standards for charging infrastructure across and within most EB markets. It is important that partners in the deployment of this infrastructure in a city have a clear and shared understanding of which types and standards of chargers are included in their plans. Just like in our existing uh, internal combustion engines right now, we have one that requires gasoline while other is using diesel. It's actually the same with electric vehicle, but this one we're calling it protocol. They have the, we have different protocol. Uh, I, I think it should be Doc Biona who's supposed to explain the charging types and standard. And I hope I'm not preempting his presentation, but I'd like to share that there are different protocols in the uh, charging business. There is one. There is a common one, char uh, Chademo. It actually came from Charge the Move. So Charge the Move is short is Chademo. Uh, and then there's Combined Charging System, which is CCS. And the one is Kubiao. It's a uh, national Chinese national standard, or uh, commonly known as GBT. Charging station, for the charging stations that we uh, want to set up, I, we, we believe that it's, we need to have at least both the demo and CCS and or CCS because they're uh, DC chargers, meaning it's fast. While GBT can actually be set up in your uh, place, in your house, in your office, in the parking area, because this one is just AC and does not require high voltage. Now, what are the different uh, roles? The, uh, what are the roles of the different stakeholders in the development of charging networks? Oops, sorry, is spelled. Uh, and the promotion of EV charging, okay? There are different roles and uh, I highlighted a few of them, but there, there is, there's more to it, not just this one. So of course the Department of Energy, uh, I got this actually from the Senate bill that I mentioned earlier. 
Department of Energy is tasked with promoting the adoption of electric vehicles and the development of charging infrastructure, while ERC or Energy Regulatory Commission is the one who's regulating the charging cost. Department of Transportation uh, is tasked with the development of policies for EV demand generation because we're also saying even though we have chargers in place and no one is using it, it's still not good. Now, Department of Industry is responsible for industry development of EVs, charging station, parts, components, and batteries. I think we are all aware that right now, uh, Philippines is not yet ready for this. We, for one, uh, I mean, our company, for one, is uh, forced to import vehicle because we don't have the capability capability to do one here locally and even for the chargers but it's a good thing that we are partnering with IMI they're into the fast charger now and hopefully one of these days they will deploy their own fast charger we also need local government units to identify local public transport route plans and include the electrification of EUVs and issuance of certificate of inspection to charging stations. And then let's not forget, forget Bureau of Internal Revenue. Uh, most of the player now in this space are just start up, not a big company. And it would be a great help if there's a tax incent incentives in the importation of chargers and electric vehicles and there's actually more i could go on and on and on hello yes Ms. Dan. Go ahead. okay and then my next slide is what are the main considerations related to battery swapping so you're seeing two pictures here the concept of battery swapping is you have this battery there you can see it it's safe secured by this and then you have to plug it get one and then replace the uh, the, the battery that you have in this case uh, it's a mo uh, motorcycle and then you just get one and then put back the other battery that you have in your unit this actually is the concept of battery swapping and this one that you're seeing is not a battery swapping okay and then to answer what are the main considerations related to battery swapping first you have to consider that there will be additional costs to purchase extra batteries you need additional resources such as manpower and logistics you also uh we saw someone doing uh, battery swapping and they're using for clipper disc because it's quite heavy and you also need to understand that there's a potential damage to the unit with the repeated plugging and unplugging, just like any household appliance that you have. It's not safe that you plug and unplug them, or it's not advisable. Let's say you're, you you have this, uh, you have your refrigerator, you're not supposed to do plugging and unplugging. Look, nope. and then the safety issues with exposed batteries uh, you don't want it as much as possible to just be sitting there especially in the terminals open to everyone and again this the the battery swapping is only for small vehicles and is not suitable for larger vehicles and i think that concludes my presentation for this afternoon I hope I was able to uh, shed some light on the topic.